Hey, this is Gabriel Anderson, and today I'm going to be doing my oral interpretation on a part of To Kill a Mockingbird. That's going to be a segment of Atticus speech towards the end of the book. And so, a quiet, respectable, humble Negro who has had the unmitigated temerity to feel sorry for a white woman has said to put his word against two white peoples. I need not remind you of their appearance and conduct on the stand. You saw them for yourselves. The witnesses for the state have presented themselves to you, gentlemen, in the cynical confidence that you would go along with them on the assumption, the evil assumption, that all Negroes lie, that all Negroes are basically immoral beings, that all Negro men are not to be trusted around our women, an assumption that we associate with minds of their caliber. You know the truth, and the truth is this. Some Negroes lie. Some Negroes are immoral. Some Negro men are not to be trusted around women, but this is a truth that applies to the human race and not to one particular race of men. There is not a person in this courtroom who has never told a lie, who has never done an immoral thing, and there is no man living who has never looked upon a woman without desire. So To Kill a Mockingbird uh, is actually very similar to The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn in that both of them focus in on the theme of African Americans and their developing view uh, in the in America uh, in the 18th and 19th centuries as well as the 20th. So uh, first they were seen as subhuman or inferior when they first came to American colonies as work as cheap or unpaid laborers on plantations as slaves as people who were subhuman who did not have any value and were less valuable than white people or people of other races. It was a misconception that is being trying that is trying to be broken down in stories like this. Because in this book, in Huckleberry Finn, you gain these perspectives of black people, whether it's Tom Robinson or Jim, and you see that they are people, they are equal people, they have the same they have the same flaws as white people but they also have the same positive characteristics as white people and all other races, that there's no distinction just because of their skin color and that their actual value does, is not derived by the, st the tone of their skin. It's actually criticizing the irony of racism in both of these books as well because, well, white people were very quick to pin lying, immorality, maybe lust, and other sinful qualities onto black people White people were just as likely, or possibly even more likely in some instances, to be, to have those qualities. And so, this, the overall goal of these stories is to show the perspective of African Americans, in that they are equal people, they are humans, they're no better than white people, but they're also no lesser than white people. We're all just humans, we're all equal. And so it's trying to break down that wall of prejudice and create more empathy for that culture.